This is the RSL Today Show, and I'm in the studio with my co-host, the one and only Keith Harrison, and our very special guest, Sharon Maskeldeer. Welcome, both of you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I'm going to ignore you this, this time. Sharon, you look delightful. <laughs> well, Keith, thank you, you David. you're a good second. And thank you, Keith. And you're both looking very dapper in your stripy shirts Passable this fine is the day. Word. I actually referred to a, a friend of mine uh, in the raft the other day. He looked, he had a magnificent suit on, and I said, "You look sartorially splendid." Yeah, <laughs> good bit of alliteration there. Can't go yeah. wrong. Can't no. go wrong. Yeah, uh, David uh, and Sharon, our uh, phone number at RSL State Branch, which is at the, the Torrens Parade Ground. Our phone number is eight one zero zero seven three zero zero. Our email is admin at rslsa.org.au. The website is rslsa.org.au and we're very big on social media. We're Getting bigger all the time. Facebook is uh, going gangbusters for yes, us and yeah. we have Instagram uh, and Twitter. So I've got a very strong following. So uh, if, it's, I, it's, if I find a post out there that uh, maybe not a lot of people are following that uh, uh, the, the poster, uh, that group, uh, if I share it, it bumps the figures up. So yeah. I'm so the man good. to talk to. Yeah. Um, look, just on a completely separate note, I would just like to uh, say a very, very big thank you to some former uh, committee members of the DFWA, Defence Force Welfare Association, who resign or retired this year. Our president, Lee Bowes, ex uh he's now just gone to committee. I've retired from the committee altogether, and so is our treasurer, Ian Smith. Um, so we now have uh, Brigadier Mick Burgess. Um, who we both, all, all three of us know, uh, who is now the new president of the DFWA South him. Australian branch. That's really great news. Yeah, good yeah. bloke yeah. to work with. Yep. And, and I really, um, Lee, Ian and, and myself, we put a lot of work into a good five or six years. Um, I'd like to think that Lee did a magnificent job. He really got it up and running uh, and it's in very, very good hands. It's well established. It has, uh, yeah. Here in South Australia. So uh, and, and congratulations. Oh, we, another one? Well, we lost one of our life members the other week. Um, group, I think he's a group captain, Lyle Claffer, um, in his 90s. Um, yeah, so Quite very, a distinguished career. Yes, a very, very distinguished gentleman. Yeah. Uh, and um, been living in a nursing home at Fullerton for quite a while. Passed away. Um, was having an operation, I believe. And, was he? And didn't come out of the op. Yeah, yeah. but he was late. I think early mid nineties. So yeah, I know that Greg Weller was involved in organising yes. the funeral. Yeah, he was. Yeah, all of that. And yeah, in fact, so Greg is our guest speaker in a couple of weeks' time. So in the mess? No, here. No, oh here. Okay, yeah. oh, that'll be yeah. great. Did you yeah. want to mention the mess Christmas lunch? Uh, yes, it's coming up uh, next week. Um, it's third Wednesday much, yeah, of the month. Third Wednesday. It's pretty much sold out. Okay. So if you, if anyone wants to go, it's thirty dollars uh, ahead this one because it's the Christmas special, and um, Cheryl will look after you. Yep. And, and ring food. Annette on eight double two seven zero nine eight zero. Um, I'm not sure. Ah. Because they've had issues. They've with had their phone phones, issues, but the, they've the, now been resolved. Yeah. But I don't know if they've got a new number. Okay. Don't so know. perhaps um, contact the Ref Association. Look, have a look online. It's called the Air Force Association, Air, Air Force SA Associ Division. Yeah. Yeah, Air Force Association, not the Ref Association. Yeah. Bad boy. Yeah. Um, now, do we want to go to Sharon, or do we, is there anything? Else no, look, we I'll just give mention? a quick mention of the Plimpton Veterans Centre, which is to, yes. at the Repat Wellbeing yeah. Centre, and they're there to help you with the uh, the going from strength to strength, with more clients, opening longer hours every day, Monday to Friday, to help with, with assistance with claims, uh, advocacy, and wellbeing. And the telephone number is seven double one seven five three five seven. So well done to. All those volunteers at the Plimpton yeah, Veterans Bill, Centre, which is no longer in Plimpton, it's in no, Door Park. No. But Bill, Titch, Ruddy, they're doing a magnificent yep. job down there. Absolutely magnificent. Good on them. Uh, excellent. Uh, let's uh, let's talk with Sharon. Sharon, welcome back. Thank you com for coming yeah. in again. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, we had a bit of story right and mind right last week. Where would you like to take us this week? Well, I just wanted to share the fact that um, in addition to my current posting with Army into the Defence Command Support Training Centre where I, I have a public affairs training team and we look after public affairs training across all three services, I've been doing a bit of work with um, back at Headquarters 9th Brigade, which, as you both know, 
Joe was my very first yes. um, um, posting um, when I was first commissioned into the Australian Army. And um, Brigadier Graham Goodwin um, has been giving me a bit of an update as to as to what's happening under his command. And just there's been some fantastic work happening there. Yep. And, and it's just I just wanted to make sure your listeners were aware oh, of do. what's been going on. In that, um, obviously, we had at the beginning of last year, you know, Operation Bushfire Assist. Yes. When That's Nine correct, Brigade yeah. worked very closely with partner agencies in support of the local community effort to support recovery efforts, particularly on Kangaroo Island and, yeah. of course, in the Adelaide Hills. Um, and then straight off the back of that, then essentially Operation COVID Assist was stood up. And again, Ninth Brigade, um, it's a reserve brigade, as many people would know, um, obviously has a presence here in South Australia, but also down in Tasmania. Correct, but essentially... Yeah has been at the epicenter um, of standing up the capability to support local authorities here in South Australia in terms of COVID assist. So, you know, all kinds of sort of planning activities, you know, liaison and advisory with state government, multiple agencies, supporting border controls to make sure that we're keeping the state safe and that we're able to kind of, you know, make sure those restrictions are are in place. Um, Supporting, you know, nasal swab testing, you know, all that kind of hands-on kind of stuff and also supporting the whole quarantine management at the Medi Hotels. So if you've been in town and you would have seen, you know, um, people in uniform, you know, around those Medi Hotels, quite often those people would have been, you know, reservists from 9th Brigade. Exactly. Essentially, who may have a civilian job that they've put on hold to be able to step up and support the state through this this whole operation. So it's been a really busy time and and, and it can't be understated quite what... what um, those people have done in terms of contributing to the overall whole of government effort. Well, well done to all of those uh, reservists and the people who were who've been on duty. How long did they do at a time, or, or was it, were they on for a week, or two weeks, or indefinite? Or do you know were there? Any set times? So essentially there would have been rotations. Right. Um, and some of those rotations, I think, depending on the capacity and ability for individuals to be released yeah. from other duties um, and indeed from civilian work um, would have depended how long they would have spent on it. But certainly there are there are some people who've, who've pretty much been working on COVID assist, you know, nonstop, you know, yeah. for the last yeah. sort of 18 months. We, we interviewed uh, the Police Commissioner Grant Stevens last year. Um, well, we had him in here just recently as well. But last year, I recall him saying that um, if it wasn't for the defence force, he would would have really been struggling. Uh, so good on him, good on all of them. Yeah. Did for, you get to assisting. meet any of them? Have you interacted with some of the volunteer? Well, I call them volunteers. So I, I yes. know they're being paid, but you met with them. Yes, absolutely. And look, and and one thing that I think really stands out is that you know to some degree this is an anonymous task. It's not something you get recognised for. Um, to some degree, also, you know, it, it's not always a, an easy task. It's not like you're you know getting to to go overseas on operations and do a lot of the things that people you know really get. Excited excited about in the army this is kind of you know day in day out you know just cracking on supporting your local community mundane work but 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 the fact is people love it and and they see the value in what they're doing and they and because i think there's that connectedness to community and they can see the direct benefits and i have to say i mean one thing i've i've actually not yet shared with with you both but um my daughter came back from london because she'd been studying over there and she had to go into quarantine in a medi hotel and in fact she was in there for two weeks like everybody else and we had this kind of fantastic little system though because there was a car park just across the road (laughs) from her window (laughs) So we would go up to the third floor of the car park every night with her friends as a bit of a cheer squad and wave madly. And I have to say that the Defence Force members who were on duty and were part of that, um, you know, that that effort there to make sure that the restrictions were being adhered to and everyone was safe, they were the the kindest, most good-natured, positive people. I mean, I made a point of going down saying, hi, how are you doing? Can I get you a coffee? You know, ha- you know what were you can we in do uniform? to support you? I was not in uniform, <laughs> absolutely. No, I was not in uniform. Um, but I just, you know, I, yeah. I just thought to myself, you know, what an awesome thing that yeah. people are putting themselves out there to do. And and the fact is, is it, the, the, the results speak for themselves. I mean, if you look in the press and you look at the kind of rates we've had in South Australia compared 
compared to interstate and indeed, you know, the UK. Sharon, I mean, it's crikey. Been, it's, it's been negligible. Indeed. I mean, we've yeah. now got a few because of people coming in from South Africa with the Omnicom variant and, and what have you. But we're still obviously getting Delta from people coming overseas. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? We've been so, so blessed to not have to deal with it as much as the other states have. I think it's very easy to underestimate quite what has been achieved. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I think we've already talked about this once on the show, but, um, you know, I came back from Europe right at the very, very beginning of the outbreak back in um, March last year, so 2020. And I, and I think I've shared with you previously that my mum and dad were decided that, that obviously they live in the UK, they were going to go into lockdown literally the next day. Yeah. Um, and they made one final trip to the supermarket and my dad got infected yeah. He contracted COVID mm. and he nearly died. Um, we were very lucky that he survived and, and he is still sick. He has long COVID and he still hasn't recovered. And I think that's just a really strong example of what this pandemic can do and how it can affect families, individuals. It, it can affect people you know. Yeah. And it's easy for us, to, as for us to forget here in South Australia just how fortunate we've been. Well said. Well, I, I read the other day that um, a... COVID nurse has actually passed away just the last couple of days. Here well, in last Australia. Week, last yeah. week, in Melbourne, I think it was, yeah. last week. Uh, now, that, that's just so tragic. Mm. Yeah. There's oh, a lot of people yeah. that have put themselves on the line. Oh, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anything more on the Nine Brigade? Uh, Sharon? Well, I mean, just to reiterate, I have to say, going back into the headquarters, um, it's been an absolute joy and privilege to just reconnect. And how's um, the Brigadier going? Oh, <laughs> Brigadier Goodwin's doing a fantastic job. Um, absolutely. I'll echo um, that. I've had the good fortune to work with him before. Yeah. I know that both of you know him very well. Yeah, um, I will just mention one new addition to the headquarters, who is Captain Adrienne Good. And um, Captain Good, she's brand new. She's just posted in as the public affairs officer there. Oh, wow. And my hope next year, gentlemen, if you will invite me back, is I'd love for Captain Good to accompany me so you can get to meet her. Um, she's got a great voice for radio and she'll probably hate me for, uh, That's right. <laughs> for dobbing her in. What we'll do is I'll, I'll talk to you afterwards because I've, I've got to start the schedule for next year very soon. And, yes, that's another one that I can... Tick the box. That's good. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, any movements uh, within Keswick Barracks? Is there any movement around buildings or changes or things like that? Oh, Ooh, Lizzie retired. That's. Um, I know that there are probably. There's always going to be movements over the Christmas yeah. New Year period, right? Because obviously that's an opportunity, you know, to to do things like just get things kind of tidied up, cleaned up. It's a stand down period. So um, the fact is, is that there will be um, a stand down. But that said, and I think this is a really important message out to the wider community, is is as happened with bushfire assist back in the summer of um, 2019. 20 yeah. even when it's stand down essentially there is a whole you know cohort of um, army reservists ready to step up if the state needs it yep. so well, the, yeah, flood yeah, fire the, the cuddly yep. creek fires we were up there within a few days of the the start of the year um, yeah. with the rsl um on work parties um and then there, during our, and then our break everyone was over on ki as well a lot of it's people just, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, look, Sharon, thanks so much for, for coming in this evening. It's, it's been amazing. a pleasure to catch up with you again. Wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. It's and the same pleasure. to you, gentlemen, and your families. And we'll see you next year. Indeed. Yeah. So uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for listening to us. Mm-hmm.